So there's some great research in this topic and it's so, so interesting. So a woman's vagina is really, really lactobacilli rich. So there's lots of lactobacilli generally dominant in that particular area. So when a baby moves through the birth canal, it actually gets impregnated with lots of lactobacilli from the vaginal secretions. Um, if we talk about labor in quite an honest way, there's often poo involved. So there may even be some feces that the baby gets on the way you know, out. All of this are kind of um, inoculations of the microbes that will first set up and help to become a part of that baby who will turn into an adult's microbiota. Um, now, if you're born by cesarean section, you're obviously not going through the lactobacilli rich vagina. So what we see in cesarean babies is their microbiome is normally dominated by species that are more on the surgeon's hands when they come out or um, also bacterial spores that are in the room. So they normally have a different route of development. So the first colonizers will look different. And again, this can change as we go through as well. So, you know, you've got um, breastfeeding and breastfeeding, breastfeeding is an incredible thing because actually it contains in their human milk what we call oligosaccharides, which are special sugars that we make as humans and all their purpose is, is to feed bacteria. So we make what's known as a prebiotic, which is a word to say we feed a bacteria. They make bacterial food in our breast milk to attract bifidobacterium, to attract lactobacilli, to attract so that, you know, some of these other early colonizers. So again, you know, this is another point of where maybe breastfeeding can't happen, so it's, it's formula feeding, but that means we're feeding different types of bacteria, so we're going to have different colonization happening. So this is where you can get microbiome development can really go in different ways depending on those really early foundations. And also what mother's microbiome was what father's microbiome was or um you know or other mother's microbiome is you know who kisses the baby who who is kind of um in cahoots with the baby all of these things are ways that we have that early colonization and that's your foundation of where your microbiome will end up as an adult it's a good point because of course the baby is essentially engulfing bacteria from the mum. but if that sort of vagina is dysbiotic meaning mm -hmm. it's imbalanced Again, that means that we're potentially inheriting microbio, microbiota that are not quite the species that maybe we were expecting to have that we would ideally have. So very interesting. If somebody does have a C-section then, mm -hmm. from your kind of clinical experience, and your clinical approach, what would you do in terms of supporting that person? Do you need to put anything in or do you leave it as it is? So I think that is really dependent on the next steps. So if someone's going the breastfeeding route, it will normally very quickly that can help a lot in kind of getting the microbiome back to where it should be in many ways. Um, there are two kind of interventions that are getting studied and need more studying at this stage, which can be done as well. So one is giving kind of baby specific probiotics. Um, Bifidobacterium infantis is, is quite a common one at this stage to try and encourage that Bifidobacterium um, colonization to happen. The second one, which is getting more research and is really interesting, is uh, using vaginal fluid and actually rubbing it on the baby to make sure that it, it gets impregnated basically with some vaginal fluid anyway. And uh, the safety of that is not 100% tested yet, but there's definitely some really good research studies moving in that direction, kind of looking at a vaginal microbiome transplant basically on the baby. Um, the only worry about that is if there's strep to coccus B, which is quite common in the vagina, is in there in high amounts that can obviously give an infection. So that's one of the things that they're a bit worried about. How can they do this safely going forward? And, and that might end up as, you know, a specific set of probiotics that mm. um, and probiotics means bacteria that are, are good for you, basically, uh, that we can then, you know, give to the baby at that time. That's amazing. And so if you had somebody that, let's just say, um, is born via C-section, mm -hmm. they're not breastfed, what are they potentially more likely to develop? 
Well, allergies is is one thing that's really, really common in kind of disturbed microbiomes in infants. So um, there's been many studies, again, looking at giving probiotics to pregnant mums and also to preg- uh, to infants to try and improve immune tolerance as quickly as possible. But also a lot of it is we don't know. We don't know where that's ending up. We know um, dysbiosis, which is the word that's used for an imbalanced microbiota, can be linked to many conditions like autoimmune conditions, obesity, um, type 2 diabetes, um, leaky gut conditions, all these sort of things. But it's very, very hard to kind of follow because there's so many things that can weave in a lifetime to kind of say X equals Y. But we do know it's involved. 